energy forecast for Sunday, June 2nd. Okay, so we have the moon in Aries here all day. However, we will see the moon go void, of course, at 6.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We won't be locking into Taurus energy, though, until 1.57 a.m. Monday morning. So there is a quite a bit of time that the moon will be void. And most often than not, when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable. We start questioning everything. It's really not a great time to feel safe and secure, to decide upon things, to make any kind of commitments. So we're going to have to pace ourselves until we lock into that fixed earth energy of Taurus. Again, early Monday morning. Now, this is also the very last day that Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, will be in Taurus energy. He will be shifting into his rulership here on June 3rd. So again, anytime that we have a planet reaching the near end of its transit, there's a little bit of intensity there. If you need to go back and take a listen to what Mercury in Taurus was all about by all means go do so if you want to know what mercury in gemini is going to be all about first of all download your june zodiac forecast secondly bust out that gemini season e-guide and thirdly just kind of follow along listen to the ascension forecast for this week and understand where the energy is shifting and how that is going to manifest in our physical bodies in our physical form Outside of that, we have 11 different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The moon is going to semi-square Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings fresh in this Gemini energy. This is essentially where it is that we have restlessness, we have ants in our pants, we want real action in our lives, but we don't exactly know the path, the plan, the strategy, the direction that we should even be focusing and concentrating our time, energy, and attention in. This is going to kind of create a little bit of instability because, of course, the Aries energy that the moon is in just wants to go, 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 go. And Jupiter now magnifying the choice points in Gemini energy. We're kind of on the fence on where we should go, 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 go in what direction, in what path. In what area, what topic, what theme? We still have a lot of information not available to us. We still have a lot of research and exploration to do throughout Gemini season in order to illuminate the path, the direction, the choice, the decision that we will eventually be leaning into. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in Gemini energy, going to make a positive interaction with Neptune in Pisces energy, his rulership. So I love this because Neptune is actually the higher octave of Venus, meaning with the Neptune energy, we're able to kind of tap into our intuition, tap into our higher self. We're easily able to tap into new creative life force energy and really kind of grasp a vision, if you will, a goal, a dream on what it is that we want to be building towards. And especially where Venus is involved, this has a lot to do with our physical realm has a lot to do with achieving safety, security, stability in our physical realm, especially where routines, relationships, and money matters are concerned. So whatever it is that we can kind of imagine, whatever dream, vision we can actually kind of see in our mind's eye, we're able to actually bring it to life into materialization through Venus, who rules over, again, our heart space, the physical body, and gives us the ability to give birth to, bring life to, certain ideas, certain visions, certain goals, certain dreams. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over our roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline. Saturn is in Pisces energy. It's a very fluid type of energy. Where Saturn is trying to build, the Pisces energy is trying to kind of remove, to deconstruct, if you will. And because we have some serious karmic life lessons that Saturn is trying to really teach us and wrap up here in the Pisces energy, especially where it is that we've been living in confusion and delusion and under a, a false set of beliefs, we are definitely challenging ourselves in this present moment to override what it is that we thought we knew. 
the moon interacting with Saturn, this is a positive interaction. So we're not getting a harsh reality check. We're also not getting this negative narrative. Instead, the moon in Aries, it's kind of bossing us up, really kind of lighting a new spark, new fire, new flame within us to rise to the challenge, to see where new roles and responsibilities are asking us to boss up. To see where we have the ability, the power, the control to jump in and start building something new. This is a beautiful interaction for us to get very serious about our long-term goals and match with the internalized energy, the passion, the excitement, the determination needed in order to see said goals through. The moon in Aries is then going to come up to bump into team up with Chiron, the wounded healer. So this is a conjunction, meaning this is just as much of an ending as it is a beginning. It's essentially a reset. Some of the things that we are realizing in this energy could be where it is that we're tired of the pain, of the trauma, of the wounds, of the anxiety, of the worry, of the fear of really kind of busting out, especially with this new version of self that we've been trying to anchor in. We can remove those particular fears, doubts, and insecurities, and we can start growing, healing, improving, repairing some of those particular issues. This is a boss up energy. It's giving us a little bit of a glimmer of a new mission, of a new quest, of a new purpose, and who it is that we have to be to actually rise up to those particular challenges. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in the final degrees of this Taurus energy is going to semi-square the North Node in Aries energy. So a semi-square is a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict. That North Node in Aries energy is trying to get us on the right path to be on this individual solo quest adventure to reach our new soul's mission new soul's purpose, soul's potential. Again, the semi-square is highlighting where it is that we're not ready to move forward. And that makes a lot of sense, seeing that the Taurus energy that Mercury is in is a fixed sign. We don't really want to make moves. We don't really want to see a whole lot of change. We're just trying to get the lay of the land. We're trying to explore our options, opportunities to make some changes that we're not prepared to make just yet. So right now, we're not really seeing the path forward. What we're doing is we're very focused on the present moment, identifying what is working, what isn't working, and furthering into that, what it is that we could strengthen that is working and what it is that we could kind of deconstruct and remove that isn't working, especially blocking our path from actually moving on. The moon in Aries then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. I love this because it means that we're getting a jolt of energy, of insight, of epiphany, of aha moments on where it is that new ways of doing things could definitely take place. Again, the Taurus energy that Uranus is in is a fixed earth sign. So again, we are kind of resisting the changes that need to be made, but Uranus wants us to open up our mind, open up our heart space, open up just our ability to see where if we tried to do something differently, maybe, just maybe, we could create a different result. Emotionally speaking, there's a lot of passion, a lot of boldness, bravery, courage coming out of this Aries energy. And we're definitely hot to trot. We're definitely building in our inner realm, cultivating a new fire, new spark, new flame that is pushing us to the brink of trying something new. The moon is then going to come up to bump into team up with Mars. Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire in his rulership in this Aries energy. He also rules over the Aries energy that the moon is in. So there's going to be an intensity here. This is a conjunction. So again, another ending slash beginning point. This could potentially be the ending of the anger, the frustration, the agitation, the animosity that's just kind of right below the surface of our awareness. And it could also be the beginning of turning that particular anger, frustration, that fuel into a more positive, more constructive, more passionate, more motivated type 
of energy. This is kind of getting us all riled up in the right ways after we release those heavier type of emotions and putting us on a path where we are willing to do what needs to be done, even if it's hard, even if it's scary, even if we're afraid of some of those particular aspects in order to get a different result. We're building in this passion, in this intensity, in this excitement for something new to actually be born. It's at this particular point in time, 6.05 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon is going to go void, of course. Now, we sit in this instability, if you will, the shakiness for about, I'm going to say, an hour plus. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, wisdom, knowledge in this Gemini energy is going to trine beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is retrograde in Aquarius energy. So Gemini energy, Aquarius energy, they're both air signs. This is what gives us our trine. Our trine is a gentle nudge, a growth moving forward. There is an aha moment. There is a little bit of grace, a little bit of ease with this particular transit. And this is going to be a longer term transit because of course, Jupiter and Pluto are both odor planets with longer orbits. So they're gonna be within orb of each other for, well, enough time for us to really decide on what it is that we wanna do. Now, here's the thing. This is an empowerment energy. It is kind of unearthing the part of us that has been buried away because we have been too, let's call it timid or fearful or anxious to actually identify what it is that we want out of life. Many people just sit around talking about what they don't want. It's an even harder time to identify what it is that we actually do want. And half of that is because once you recognize what it is that you do want, then you're responsible and accountable for actually making it happen or being accountable and responsible for it not happening at all. So there is like this realization, oh my goodness, I have wants, needs, and desires. Oh my goodness, here's a goal that I've stuffed down so far within myself that I didn't even know that it was still alive and well. This is allowing our goals, our passions, our desires to rise to the surface. And even more than that, it's putting us in a situation where we're gaining some insight. Pluto, typically speaking, reveals to us hidden details. And so this is a, I'm going to say an opportunity because of the Gemini energy that Jupiter is in to maybe not have the kind of clarity that we want, but maybe have information that will help us eliminate options to put a more favorable option in the spotlight. And so this is building our motivation to pursue something bigger, something more meaningful, something with a deeper purpose. This puts us in a situation to kind of see where it is that we have the opportunity to boss up, where we could be the creators of our reality and go after what it is that we actually want. This is going to be a soup super powerful, intense type of energy that if you're not grounded and rooted and aware of it could definitely make you a little bit anxious, a little bit edgy, if you will. Or if you are aware of it and you do have the power, the control, the discipline over your thoughts and over your emotions, this is going to be great for us to have an epiphany, gain some insight, and then rapidly process this information to organize our thoughts and therefore come up with a path, a plan, a strategy on how it is that we're going to bring new goals, new visions to life. So this is going to be a powerful force of energy for us to be working with for the next couple of weeks at least. The moon is then going to semi-square Venus. So this is probably not going to feel so good. Venus, of course, in this Gemini energy, very divided in her heart space on what she wants, needs, and desires, what she needs to do, what she needs to grow, what she needs to let go of. The moon in this Aries energy, again, a little bit fiery, a little bit passionate, a little bit reckless with emotions, if I do say so myself. And so this particular interaction could definitely bring out a lot of the fears, doubts, and insecurities that we are currently kind of harboring within us about the reservations that we have to address some relationship dynamics first and foremost. Of course, Venus is all about the love and relationships. And because she's in Gemini energy, she's questioning whether or not the grass is actually greener on the other side. She's questioning whether or not she could actually be doing more for herself by detaching from some of the long-term 
let's call them relationship attachments that may not be as encouraging and supporting as we need them to be in order to support us in doing our own thing and kind of fulfilling the wants, needs, and desires that we now recognize within ourselves. And so this could bring a lot of anger, a lot of frustration to the forefront. This could definitely trigger our heart space and therefore our head space to put us in a verbal vomit situation of animosity if we're not careful about our energy and how we're projecting our unstable energy from the inside onto the outside world. So that's not going to feel so good. The moon is then going to semi-square the sun. So again, furthering the complexities of choices of do I stay, do I go, of should I do this or should I do that? The moon and the sun, anytime that they come together, there is an emotional awareness, even if it comes out of frustration, even if it comes out of anger. And so the moon in Aries, very fiery, very aggressive, very, let's call it frustrated and agitated. And the sun, of course, shining a bright light in this Gemini energy is highlighting the different options, the different choice points, and they're very extreme in nature. So this is going to create some tension and conflict between what it is that we're feeling that we should do and what it is that we actually have the option to do in our physical realms as of right now. So definitely kind of, let's call it fanning the flames of the agitation and the frustration that we are definitely sitting in because of all of this Aries energy. The last thing that we have going on here today is Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, in the final degrees of this Taurus energy, sextiling, beautiful interaction with Neptune, who's in his place of power in this Pisces energy. So this is going to be beautiful for us to work with because first of all, it's popping our imagination off. We are having new ideas. We are having new visions. We are having new little glimmers of insight, if you will. And we are definitely tapping into a really weird, deep sense of knowing and understanding without the actual proof or evidence or even anything in our physical realms changing in order for us to arrive at this particular understanding. So it's like our intuition is jacked, it's highlighted. We are kind of being triggered and activated to see things from a different set of eyes. And because we're anchored in with this Taurus energy and Mercury, of course, rules over the lower level of our intellect, whatever it is that our higher self is doing, whatever kind of intuitive insights we're aligning with, whatever imagination we're able to actually kind of tap in into, we're able to bring it down into the lower level of our intellect and actually make sense of it. And again, that fixed earth energy of Taurus is really kind of saying, okay, well, how are we going to bring this idea to life? How are we going to bring this vision to life? How are we going to start planning towards actually manifesting this particular situation? So this is like highly inspired insight. And this is just kind of tweaking our intuition into a new level so that we can start picking up on subtle energies, on these little bits of glimmers, the little puzzle pieces that are getting downloaded into our higher mind.